Now this is a second uh, one of the cloud flies I'm going to be tying. Now here you can see, if you make it out, this is a they call a blaine ginger. It's an upwinged uh, clay style fly. I mean you'll see the other patterns here. There's quite a few uh, different styles, but uh, basically a teal and black there. Uh, but the one I'm going to be tying is uh, is this one here, is the blaine ginger. That one's quite a light wing in that one. Uh, I'm using the secondary feathers from a, uh, a snipe. Now they can vary slightly in colour a wee bit, but this is the snipe here, this is the wing. Secondary feathers, the primary ones is the longest, and then the secondary ones are the next one down, or the next size down, and the main wing, like these ones here. These are the type of feathers that you'd be using. Now, I'm going to roll the wing like we did before, in the first video I did on the, the hare's ear, now, thread I'm going to be using in this fly is uh, again, I'm going to stick to the pairs of silk. In this case, this is the yellow one, the primrose yellow. I'm just going to run the wax through it just the once, then I'm going to put it back onto the thread. As I put it back onto the thread, I rub it through my fingers as you can see. You can hear the, the grip the wax gives the thread. Now, the hooting choice is up to yourself. This is a size 14. Uh, just use a standard uh, wet fly hook or a medium wire. It's up to yourself. Uh, this is just an old mustard hook I'm using. Now, what we do here is we start the thread at the eye, come down five turns or so, and then remove the waist. We've got our feather here. Now, what we do here, we don't need a right and a left, we roll the wing. So, what we do is we bring enough out to roll the wing. So we basically bring it out to check the tips. Tips are a wee bit ragged, to, uh, ragged there, but they're not too bad. So what we're going to do is tear it away. Then we're going to fold the fibres, fold the wing, or roll the wing as some would say. It's just into itself. So you roll it like that and then bring the wing together. Just pull it together so you get a nice uh, taper there. Then we're going to tie it forward to the eye. I prefer to tie it myself forward to the eye, it's much easier to sort of tidy up with the waist when we cut it away. The your length of your wing, you're looking round the hook length or so. Pinch and loop. Now when you pinch the thread through, try and encourage the back end of the fibres, these fibres to come towards, meaning when you pull down, instead of these can sort of stretch back with the thread as you pull down, you want these to get pulled back, so I just allow that to happen using my fingers, it's something you have to work within your fingers. And there's your wing, there. Now we carry on down a couple more turns just to secure it in, and then we trim away the waist ends of the fibre of the wing at an angle, because this will help taper. Now the thread is waxed, so we're nice and tight, Touch and turns with the thread as we wind down. Then we tie in some tinsel. So it's just been lined with the barb here, so I've got some. This is basically vineyard tinsel. It's a small vineyard tinsel. Uh, problem is getting it sometimes now. Uh, Lagerton's a good one, you can get them from Lagerton. It's a proper tinsel you need for the tag. This is a tag. So I'm going to catch this in the length of the tag, which is about two to three tons of the tinsel which is there, and then nice and tight, we wind it touching, now that's enough, and then we come up and fall up, and then basically I try and make sure this is like square, straight turn if I can, you'll never get it basically perfect uh, because you're tying on something like that, so what I'm going to do here is just then wind up, nice and tight, All the way up. You can trim that, but you can now, what you can do, save your scissors a wee bit, just bend and break away the tinsel. There we go. Now we want my thread right up at the wing, so there, see a turn from the wing. Now you've got, this is a small Indian hen neck. You can see it's a bit kind of furnace like further up, but right at the base you'll see they're just a, like a ginger like colour. Uh, these are the small feathers you want to use. Now they are a wee bit delicate, so you just got to be careful with them. So we take one away. Now the base of the feather, you can see it's quite dark, we don't want that. 
So the best thing I do is take them away. Now you only need two turns of this feather, uh, the hackle, sorry. So I'm looking at the front of the hackle, it's facing myself. So we'd catch it with that single turn before we get to the wing. We then lift the wing and then we do one turn really in close, tight, another, then another. That's three turns, which is tying in the stem at the same time, then we can trim away the waist. Just come in, take your time, trim that away. Watch your wing a wee bit. We don't mind, uh, as long as the wing stays together, being the secondary feather, they, they do tend to stay together. I've got a small pair of hackle pliers here, so what we're going to do is we come round with full turn at the back. This may come away a couple of times, so just be patient with it. So we come right round at the back, there's your single turn there, we'll take the wing out of the way, and then we can right back to where we started, so it's turn in front, and then we follow up with the thread. Just take your time as we come through here, put at least a couple of turns in. This is wax thread, so there's, there's plenty of grip. So what we can do then, trim away the waist, and then we come straight in and work finish. Let's go back here. One, two, three. Don't worry about the wing at this point, it'll be okay once we tighten up, once we tidy. Trim away your thread. You want the wing to be soft, you want it to be so when you cast, these are cast upstream and allowed to drift back naturally. Uh, it's a funny looking, as a lot of people, with the first fly I put on uh, YouTube, they were asking about the style of the fly, it goes back a long way. Uh, it's an old style and still fish today, a lot of interest in it, especially here in Scotland. Now, all we have to do is just a wee tiny bit of varnish, just this is quite a light varnish, you could use a needle. You just touch the head there and let it soak towards the back. And underneath. And there we go, and that's the Blaine Ginger. Tied in the Clyde style, up winged wet fly. So it's very sparse. A lot of movement in the fly. Uh, most of the flies are tied like this, so you get the Blaine Black. Uh, you get say basically green nose, the dark green nose, which is with the olive. You get the light green nose down the bottom here. Uh, there's a few diff sort of different patterns, passage and basically the March Brown is the pheasant tail body, this one here. And then you get the gold bodied version. So you do I mean there's lots of patterns, black spider with the silver tag at the back. There's the hairs here which I found earlier. As I say that's the, the blaine ginger. A lovely dressing, lovely tying, uh, easy to tie once you get into it. It's just, when you start to tie a few, they'll be a bit fiddly at first, but if you use the sort of method, just watch the many counts where I'm tying in the hackle, I turn at the back, three at the front. The reason for that is so that when you wind the hackle through, it's the same level and it sits better. So when you do a turn at the back and turn at the front, it'll sit, sit fine for you. So I hope you enjoyed that tying. Uh, as I say, that's the Blaine Ginger. I love the pattern. <laughs>